Okay, so the final scene of the Mako attraction, uh, guests will actually rise up to the shipwreck and get to the very top. So you're looking at a station that's about 40 to 50 percent complete and seen it, uh, about 10 percent complete and show. Uh, the unique thing about Mako, uh, we really want to take advantage of the, the moment at NASA that everybody loves when the seats rise up, it's that great sound and everybody cheers and claps. We took that and we've kind of quadrupled the experience here at Mako. So this is a very smart station. It's a show-driven station that will react to the movements of the ride and the dispatch and the ride operators themselves. We'll actually run through various show sequences uh, when we get the dispatch clear from our operations team. Uh, what guests will see, hanging below this blue ceiling, which is the backdrop, are scenic elements that represent the ocean, the prey fish, and some sharks swimming overhead. Through that scenic, you'll see the content on a large LCD screen that just came in from Hong Kong on Saturday. Um, and it's behind this milky substrate because it's meant to look like you're looking at the surface of the ocean and you see the shadows of these animals swimming above you. You'll see sharks and various prey fish swimming above. When we get the dispatch button, those sharks will tri they'll trigger a show sequence above that will actually have the Mako shark strike its prey fish in front of you here about part three. And then this, the fish will scatter, and the Mako will start swimming forward in the direction of travel of the train. Again, speaking to the guests about you're the Mako shark, this is Mako point of view. Sharks eat fish, they don't eat humans, let's go on a ride. It's a pretty simple story to understand, and it's the one that guests really expect from us when it comes to coasters and animals within all of our parks.